Everybody all right? Uh, if you have a seat beside you and you, uh, uh, just, just let somebody know so that we can uh, fill that up. We apologize for those in the atrium not having a seat for you. All right. Uh, let's pray, shall we? Father, thanks so much for today. Thanks for the word uh, that you are about to bless us with. Prepare our hearts. Allow us to receive it well. Uh, uh, allow our hearts to align with yours. Remove the taste of the things of the world so that the, our taste bud will crave the things of the word. Thanks for the opportunity that we have to have the Bible that we can open it today. There's still some countries where you can't do that. Thanks for giving us a, a Bible on our phones or the Bible that we have in our hands because there were centuries upon centuries where they didn't have that. Thanks for the privilege of opening up your love letter to us. Teach us now, we pray, in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Thanks for being in the house. If you're just joining us, we're uh, in the second message of a series we're doing called Puzzled, Why Commitment Can Take You Further Than Love. Uh, last week, we talked a little bit about... Uh, <clears throat> Why the church needs to apologize to young adults and to singles. Uh, and we said that we've done a poor job of painting the accurate picture of how the Bible sees singles. And so we apologized for that last week. And we, we said, parents, you should apologize to your kids too. Because of your desire um, or lack of teaching them uh, and preparing them for, for the single life. Uh, we believe the Bible argues that it's the preferred life, and if you, if you missed last week, just pick the tape up, and you can get that there. Um, today, I want to read another passage of Scripture. It's found in Philippians chapter 4. We're going to read three verses, because honestly, that's all you can... You're not going to want these three, so that's all you can handle. Um, and so let's, let's stand, if you don't mind, and let's read Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 11, 12, and 13. Paul is writing this from a jail... He's shackled to a Roman soldier, and he's getting ready to tell us a pretty profound truth. The good news about the truth is that you can learn it. You don't have to be born with it. Let's read the word of the Lord and see what he has to say to us on today. I want everybody to read. If the person beside you is not reading, touch them and say, that means you need to read. You need to read. So listen for them. If they're not reading, say, come on, you got to read. Gently, don't hit them too hard, gently. Um, here we go. Let's read the word of the Lord together. Not that, for I have to be content in whatever. All right, here we go. I have, I have, I have to be content. Not that I speak from want, but in whatever circumstance. I am. I've learned to be content. That's good news for somebody. Whether today is a good day or a bad day, Paul's getting ready to tell you, you can be content no matter. Whether, whether it's green and the skies are wonderful outside or whether it's overcast and gloomy, Paul says, you can learn to be content. Next verse, next verse, next verse. Here we go. Second verse. Read it with me, everybody. I know... To live in, don't go no further, don't go no further, stay right there, stay right there. I, I know, because I've learned contentment, how to live in prosperity. That's very hard to do, by the way. It's very hard to be content with prosperity. Because prosperity will make you say, I don't need God. Because you can depend on your money, you can depend on your influence, you can buy stuff. So prosperity will say, I, I don't know how to be content because I always want more. Be careful, Collin County. Be careful. But I can leave with humble. I, 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 can, I know how to get along with humble means. Don't say you know how. Well, you know, I grew up broke. No, 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 no. What your broke is is still, is still rich. Broke means you didn't have a refrigerator. That's broke. If you got a refrigerator, you were good, you were good and rich. Your broke means you live paycheck to paycheck or you didn't have enough money at the end of the month. That ain't broke. That's mismanagement. <laughs> Anyways, come on, come on, come on, come on. In, in any and every, I have the secret of being and going hungry. Both of 
Ma, 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 ma. Here's what he says. First of all, he says, it's a secret, so not everybody is going is to have access to this. Not everybody will know how to be content. Then he says, being filled when I'm good and going hungry. Then he uses this one, having abundance or suffering. I wonder if you know how it feels like to be content in a marriage where you're suffering. Paul says you can learn that. Paul says you don't have to be frustrated all your life. You can learn that. You can learn how my marriage on today, every marriage has peaks and they got valleys. And you got to know how to be content in the valley just as much as in the peaks. He says, here's how you do it. Next verse. Read it with me, please. I can do. Stop right there. That includes your situation. He says, you can learn to be content in your cup. With all the mess that you got going on right now, he says, it's included in the all. No matter how miserable you're feeling right now, God says, you can do it because, because I've included it in the I can do. Say it with me. Oh. Finish it. Through yeah. who? Now, here's your problem. Here's your problem. The reason why you're still in your mess, you're still frustrated, is because you only hear half the verse. You only hear, I can do. Oh. And you stop right there. That's why you're in the mess that you're in. But if you ever say, God, it's not me, it's you living through me, then I can do, finish it now, all things through who you may be seated in the house of the Lord. Last week, let me give you a quick summary. We shared and we talked about the fact that every person in the house today, if you're a young adult or you're single, you are living in one of these chairs. You're sitting in one of these chairs. This is all review. Last week we suggested you are either, say this word with me, everybody, consumed, or you're sitting in the chair called, or you're sitting in the chair called, one of those three chairs everybody is sitting in. Either you're consumed, which means you're saying, I need a mate. Or you're confused or curious where you're saying, I want a mate. Or you're convinced where you're not even asking the question because you're zoomed in on fulfilling what God's called you to do. Ladies and gentlemen, last time we said there are people that, that, that are sitting here that wake up every day and all they're thinking about is, I want a mate. That's their number one song. That's the song they love the most. I want a mate. I can't wait to find a mate. I check my phone. Your heart races when, the, when, you, when your phone goes off to see who it is. Maybe this is the one. Every person you see, you're evaluating them. Is this the one? Then you put God in it. Is this the one, Lord? <laughs> because you're consumed by it. You have all the online dating apps you should only have one or two. You got 15 or 16. You got them all. You on all of them. You, be, you, you Sometimes you even get nervous about it because you go on there and, you, ooh, I know that's my ex right there. Ooh, what am I going to do? And, 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 and you're consumed by it. Then there's some of you who are Christians. That's a, that, by the way, Christians live here too. There's some of you who are Christians that you, your argument is I ain't as bad as they are. They're bad. They're real bad. God, I'm not as bad. I'm a little more godly. I don't think about it every day. I only think about it Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So you're a little bit more, you're a little confused, you're a little curious, but, but, but you're, not, you're not consumed with it. It's not every day you're going after it. And then the third person is the person over here. Last week, we talked about this person. We said, God says that singleness, if you are alive and you are, you are, you are, you, 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 you got breath this morning. It means you got the gift to sing, at least for today. It means you got a gift. Here's what he says. I'm giving you a gift. How dare you say you don't want the gift I'm giving you? And we have too many singers that get up every morning and say, I, I want out of this. I'm in jail. I want out of it. Get me out. Therein lies the problem. And so number two, we said last time, not only is the gift, that you should be living not for this world, but for the world to come. Number three, we said last time that you ought to be, uh, have a single devotion. You ought to be undivided in your devotion for God. If you live in this church, that's what you do. Today, I'm going to ask another question. Today, I'm going to show you objectively whether you're really sitting in this chair or not. Because objectively today, I'm going to ask you, do you love your life? 
Because if you really love your life, then you won't let any and anybody mess it up. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But you, the question we're going to answer today from the Bible is do you love? Because the people here love their lives. Let me say it another way. They love his life through them. Because that's what Galatians chapter 2 says. I'm crucified with Christ. I'm no longer living. It is now Jesus Christ who gets to live his life through me. So I love the life that Jesus is currently living through my life. That's if you're sitting in this chair. Now, some of you are perpetrating because some of you, mm, you think you're living in this chair, sitting in this chair, but you're only sitting in here because you've been hurt so much when you've been in these two chairs that you have vowed to yourself. I'm not going to get hurt again. So you're sitting here not because of God, but because you don't want to get hurt again. And there are too many of you living there out of fear, not out of your love relationship with Jesus. And it shows up in your relationship because you, if you see, if you see somebody, and maybe you've been in a in in some form of abusive relationship in the past, and you see somebody even raise their voice because of your pain you're going to assume the worst about the person. And because you do, you're, not, you're going to say, God, that's not your will for me. And you would have missed, but here's why. Because you've sat in this chair so long because you don't want to get hurt. So that's what we're going to talk about today. How do you know if you love your life? What, because too many people lie to themselves, arguing they do, when they really don't. So I'm going to give you an objective standard by which you get to evaluate yourself today. So I want to start out by showing you how messed up our culture is. The culture that you're raising your kids, the culture that you get to live in today, I'm going to show you how, how, how toxic it is. The word is discontentment. Never before in the history of mankind have people had so much and want so much more. Never before in the history of mankind. <laughs> Have people had so much, which you got a lot, even though you think you don't, and still yearn for so much more? Never before. It's never happened. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? Never before in history could we measure popularity, but we can today. You can deter- you remember when you, used to, when you used to go to college or, I mean, high school or middle school, uh, uh, you used to measure popularity by, by who sits with who at the lunch table. So if you got two or three of your boys sitting with you at a table and th- that other dude over there got like 10, they're like, dang, they like him more than they like me. Oh, no, not today. Today, every second of the day, you can know if you're popular or not. Just go on social media. How many friends you got? I got 100. They got 600. Dang. I ain't popular. You put out a post. You post something on Instagram. How many people like it? You got three. They got 25. Dang. They like them more than they like me. You get instant feedback because now social media has created an environment where you know how popular you are instantaneously. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the culture we live in. And it, it destroys contentment. And yet still God says we ought to always be content. So how do you live in a world where God says, I want you to be content, but the culture has set it up Where everything you do, you get to compare yourself to somebody else. Watch it. Here are the three words. Word number one. Can you read that, everybody? Come on, everybody together. Comparison. The reason reason for our discontent, second word, the reason for our discontent is that in our culture today, we get to compare ourselves to everybody. Everybody. You just always say, ooh, they got that better car than I do. Ooh, they got a better house than I do. Ooh. They got. And you get to see it on social media. And here's the root of it, which is the sin that we have popularized and made a cool sin. 
the sin called, say it with me, everybody. You don't even know that you're envious, but you do it all the time, and you don't even realize it. It's the reason why when everybody comes and they're putting, ooh, in Maui today, ooh, two months later, ooh, in uh, the Cayman Islands today, ooh, in Paris today, ooh, and, 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 and every time you see it, you be like, I need to change my job. <laughs> I need a job like that. They, they will make you quit your job. They will make you quit your job. Now listen, 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 listen. You live in your everyday mundane life. They show you their highlight reel, and you start lusting after their highlight reel like that's their everyday life. I wish they'll tell you the truth. Marriage, a wreck, but I'm in Maui. <laughs> you don't want to tell the truth, do you? You don't want to tell the truth, do you? Kids hate my guts. But I'm in the Cayman Islands on the beach because I'm never at home. So I'm out doing the best that this world has to offer, beach and sunset. <laughs> While your kids can't stand who you are. You have given your kids all kinds of um, experiences, but no relationship. And you sitting at home, envious. Uh, okay, okay, some of you are not believing me. Um, um, you, some of you ladies love to watch these cooking shows and, or these, uh, or these uh, 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 do it yourself, fix up your house, or, 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 or Jada got this one, where they carry to a different island and get the house. My wife be thinking about, hey man, listen, listen, when these people get on your nerve one more time, let's just go to Paris and start a church in Paris. <laughs> I'd be like, see, that's the problem. That's the problem. She done watching so many shows about, uh, she, she has already dreamed up one community church, Paris. <laughs> Anyways, come on. But for real though, for real, for real. So, so, so you're at a cooking show. You're watching them cook. This is a true, this happened all the time. And while they're cooking, you see their countertops and the knobs on their cabinets. The show ain't about countertops and cabinets, but you see it, and you be like, damn. <laughs> I'm a lying, I'm a lying, I'm a lying. You see, and all of a sudden, you start comparing yourself. You look at your house, you be like. You look at their house, and all of a sudden, you bright. It's like Jesus showed you, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. What, what are they doing? And then you start praying for it. Now you're calling God down. God, I am praying for a remodeling of this kitchen in your son's name. Where you get it from? Because you're watching the TV show and you saw that it's not about the, the, the cabinets, but that's what you saw. Happens all the time, don't it, everybody? Don't it? Singles, you come into church, you see them two people holding hands, you'll be like, You have no idea what's going on. But all you see is the end. You see him rubbing her back. That's because they've been fighting for the last four weeks. And he's trying to get some. So he's trying to rub that back. And you'll be like, oh, oh. What's wrong with y'all? You see their highlight reel, and you get discouraged on the inside and saying, God, where is mine? Be careful what you beg him for. Come on, come on. Here's the last one. This is a true story. The researchers have done uh, some work where they give people, they put people in front of Facebook for half an hour and ask them to rate their feelings. The number one rated feeling after half an hour on social media, particularly Facebook, is I feel more depressed. <laughs> Having gone through it for half an hour. Why? Because you're comparing yourself to everybody and what they have, and now you're wondering why I don't have what they have. The reason you're discontent is because of comparison. The reason uh, that's driving you 
is because you're envious. You want what they got instead of enjoying what God has given you. So turn to your notes. If you don't have one, raise your hand. The man and woman will come by and give you one. And let me show you why you ought to love your life. Why is this so important that you love your life? Number one, we, we suggest that if you, if you love your life, if you love his life, then I will protect it. I will not allow someone else to mess it up. See, if you're sitting in this chair, uh, the, consume, the, 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 the convinced chair, and you love your life, you love what God's calling you to do, you love what you're in the middle of, you're living it to the fullest, then you will not allow some knucklehead to come in there and mess up the good thing you and God got going. But when you don't love your life, then you let anybody roll up in here talking about, hey, and you let them roll up into your life. But it is showing you that you are frustrated with your own life and not loving it. This is huge. You've got to realize that God says you have a gift, and I want you to love what I've given you. Love where you are today. Don't lust for what you want tomorrow. Number two. He says, you're protected. Number two, he says, I will enjoy. I will not assume my new pastors are greener. <laughs> I will enjoy where I am. That's contentment. I have learned the art that wherever I am, I will enjoy. Parents, teach your kids this early. Do not get them out of situations because I don't like it. Great. Well, you show the world what it looks like when you don't like somebody or you don't like something, but you depend on God and you ask God to help you change your taste buds so you can like it because all of life is not going to be what you like. If your parents had taught you that, you'd have lived differently. Preach, Pastor. Be careful, Sidney Collin County parents, that you don't get your kids out of everything that they say they don't like. I know you have the money to do it, so I don't like this school. Let me go to another school. I don't like this coach. Let me go to another coach. I don't like, I don't like. Well, great. Guess what the world has to offer you? You're not going to like what the world has either. So how do you do what Paul says and be content whether I have much or I have little, whether I like it or whether I don't like it? That's why marriage says, I will, I will be with you whether in sickness and in whether richer or that's why I don't allow people to change their vows. I got to see your vows. Because maybe you have a, a dream land that you think you're going to. <laughs> but there is going to be some better. And there is going to be some. Better believe that. There is going to be some richer. And even though you think there can never be poor, there might still be some. So you got to learn how to live in both environments. You got to learn and teach your kids how to live in both environments so you don't take them out of it just because you can afford it. See, part of the problem with singles is you think the grass really is greener on the other side. But that's also assuming that it's brown on your side. So since it's brown on your side, you're like, ooh, if I get over to the greener side, everything's going to be all right. No, 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 no. When you get over there, I promise you, every married person in here can say, oh, no, there are some extended brown days. <laughs> can I get a witness, married people? Yeah. They'll be like, I got more brown days than green days. <laughs> so if you don't know to enjoy, how, to, how to enjoy your life in the brown days by yourself, then all hell freaking break loose when you got brown days with somebody else. Because now you get to blame them for your brown days. Oh, I'm going to deal with you all next week. Don't worry, married people. I'm going to deal with you. And by the way, singles, don't check out on us next week. Because you need to learn what you're going into. So you can count the cost. Somebody tell you if you cross 121. And if you cross it, 60% uh, chance that you're going to survive. No, 60% chance that you're going to die. 40% chance that you're going to survive. Will you run by the road? No, you wouldn't. You say, 60%? I'm staying on this side. Well, that's what y'all single people need to do. Stay on this side then. Because the chances ain't good that you're going to make it over there. Mm-hmm. That's why you got to have an have a honest, uh, uh, honest about marriage. Because it takes work to get through it. Yeah. Married people, can I get a witness? All right, come on, let's go. Right? My time's running out of it. Number three. Let's run through some of these. 
I will keep it in perspective because I know someone else cannot fill me. Only God can. So I'm not looking for them to fill me. I really am looking for God to do it. God's the one that's going to fill you. Not your spouse. No, next one. Let's go. I will respect it. I won't, ooh, I won't lower my standard. Do you see what I'm saying? No, no, this, this is so huge. If you lower your standards, it means that you're saying to God, I don't respect who I am. I don't respect what you've called me to do. So I'm going to lower it to get somebody because I'm so desperate. I will receive anybody just to get out of the mess that I find myself in. Which means you got one messed up person that you're now joining in. So if you think you had mess by yourself, you wait till both of y'all get together. Mess personified. That's what you're going to get. Next one. Come on, let's go. I will see it as a gift. I'm grateful for the gospel that I get to participate in as I share, because God say you get to zoom in, focus in, so that now you have an undivided attention to me, so now you can do what my priorities are, which is the spread of the gospel. Next one. It says, I will celebrate it. I will not be negative and envious of what others have. That's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're rejecting that, God, and I will absolutely celebrate the life you've given me to live now. Because if you can't celebrate it when you're by yourself, it's going to be real hard for you to celebrate it when somebody else is there with you. It's, it's a habit. So here's what you're doing. You are rating yourself on those. One to ten. Where are you at on those? Do I really respect what God's blessed me with? Do I really see it as a gift? And rate them. I'm at, I'm at a number three here. And then if you're really courageous... Give it to somebody who know you well, that's not afraid to tell you the truth, and you will see where you really lie. But we have to do it, or else you will deceive yourself thinking you're sitting in this chair, or thinking you're sitting in this chair, or this. You'll think you're sitting here when you really are over here. You just don't know how to tell yourself the truth. And what's the, one of the most pathetic signs is seeing someone who is unaware of who they really are. It's, you ever meet one of them persons? You mean somebody who don't know that they talk too much? <clears throat> and they make the whole conversation about them. And you'd be like, do they realize that for the last 30 minutes, they just continue the conversation forever? And they'd be like, who did that? And you'd be like, Jesus. I've never seen somebody who is so unaware. Turn the page over. I want you to go to on the left side of the center uh, when you open it up like this, go to the left side. Do you love your life? Now I'm going to give you 12 things, all of whom you can go research later. I want you to give you 12 things that will determine whether you're in this chair or not. This is huge. This is an objective list from the Word of God that will determine whether you're in this chair or not. The idea and the concept is I want you to rank yourself and ask yourself, where am I at in this? Where, where, am I at a number one? Am I at a number ten? Why is this important? Because the more you love your life is the more you're going to find somebody else who love theirs. The less you love your life is the more you're going to find somebody else who don't love theirs. So you've got to know because like attract like. Mm -hmm. Here we go. <clears throat> number one. Oh, I wish somebody had taught me this a little earlier. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. I know why, I know my why, and I am fulfilling my calling. Ladies and gentlemen, two most important days of your life, when you're born and when you know why you were born. Too many people still don't know why they were born. Too many people still don't know why God left you here. Too many people still don't know why God didn't take you up to heaven after you got saved. You got to know. How do you know your why, Pastor? That's because you know your spiritual gifts. That's because you know your value system, what you prioritize. That's because you know your pain and you know what you're passionate about in light of your pain. Where all of them intersect, that's where God wants you to use your gifts and ability for his glory. But too many people don't care about that. Not one rip. Don't care about it. And I'm saying, you can't love your life until you know what God's called you to do. So why don't you pursue it where you at? Are you convinced that you know for sure what he's calling you to do? That's your job. You got to know that. Number two, you don't like this one either. Jesus is my best friend. I've talked about this all the time. Jesus is my best friend. What does that mean? Whoa, 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 whoa. What does this mean? 
This means that you spend unhurried time with God and that you love it. This means that you have a closet where you take your stuff to God before you tell anybody else. This means when somebody hurts your feelings, you don't go tell nobody else first. You tell God first. This means you have an ongoing personal relationship with God. If you look at the verse that's under there, here's what the verse says. How can you love anybody else if you have not received and appreciated the love of God? Because it's God that's going to teach you and how he loves you that's going to teach you how to love somebody else. So why do you want to go pursue any other relationship until you can vast the greatness of the God that shows how much he loves you? If you don't know how to cultivate intimacy with God, how are you going to cultivate it with anybody else? Because he's the perfect one that loves you regardless of how and what you do. So therefore, if you can't appreciate his love, how are you going to appreciate anybody else's love? He tells us, you got to make Jesus. This is why last Friday, um, the young adults and singers were talking. And every question came up was sexually related. And I, said, and I said to them, I said, hey, here's why you've got a problem. Because the line God has for you is over there. The line you, you want to draw is over here. So what you're feeding and the affections of your heart, it's everything over here instead of over here. The question you ought to be asking is, how do I get closer to God? Because the closer you get to God, the less you have taste buds for stuff over there. But if you don't have a best friend as Jesus and you don't know how to cultivate that, then you're not at this line. You're at this line talking about, uh, 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 okay, how far is too far? Wrong question. You ought to ask, how close can I get to Jesus? Next one. Uh, oof, this one. D don't lie. Am I discipling somebody else? See, part of the problem with churches today is that you come to church to consume. This, this is huge. This is huge. This is the problem of the current day big C church. You come to church and you come to church to consume something, which is why you can, well, I don't like that. I don't like that. That wasn't good. That wasn't good. That wasn't good. Because you come as consumers. <clears throat> if you ever flipped it and say, I'm coming to church, to learn so that I can take what I learned today and then go teach somebody else in the world. Then you come to church not as a consumer but as a learner. Which is what Jesus says, go make disciples of all nations. So when you come to church, no, I'm coming to church. Hey, pastor, give me some more, give me some more, give me some more, give me some more. I go home and I'm studying it back. Hey, man, let me be a Berean and study to make sure that what the pastor said was true. Okay, now that it's true, let me go teach somebody else. And what you should do is you should, after this service, go find somebody who's not a Christian, tell them how you live your life based on these sermon notes, and then let them have a taste of what God might want to do in and through them. But the reason we don't do it is because we just come as consumers, not as learners who want to then go disciple somebody else. Matthew 28 tells you, here's what, it wasn't a suggestion, it's a command. Go, make disciples. So my only question when I see you, I should ask you, who are you discipling? And if you tell me nobody, I should say, I should rebuke you and say, you're in sin. But you don't want that because then you want to say, oh, they're so legalistic at that church. Oh, my gosh. Because you're not doing what the Bible is saying. You want God to bless you with everything, and you're not doing what he has already clearly revealed to you. His last words, go make disciples. And you have nobody that's following you. You have nobody that you're discipling. You have nobody that you're pouring your life into. And then some selfish person who said, no, I'm doing it with my kids. Yes, you should do it with your kids, but the world has enough pagans out there that it can't be only your kids that you care about. That's why you got to go now and you got to say, I'm going to disciple my kids. And if I have another mom that, that has some young kids my age, I'm going to disciple her so she can know how to disciple her kids. And if I have another brother who has other brothers that he wants to disciple. And then that's the process that we, so you should come to church to learn so that you can then go back and disciple others. How are you doing? Don't tell me you love your life if you're not doing what God's called you to do and commanded you to do. Next one. It's just, we've talked about this already, is I see this as a, as, a, as a gift and have an undivided devotion to God. Next one. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to stay right here for a moment. I guard the affections of my heart. I'm going to stay right here for a moment because this one's big. Ladies and gentlemen, just because you can watch anything don't mean you should watch anything. Listen, just because you have the freedom don't mean you use the freedom you have. Because there's some things that your heart can't take. And you don't realize it. And so what happens is you don't realize that you end up in foolish situations because you love what you love so much. You should be starving some stuff out of your heart. 
Um, Jada and I fight all the time over what she puts on social media because I don't want her to put everything on there. She loves it. She's a junkie. She loves social media. She loves it. And you know what, y'all? She's she good. That's her personality. I want her to thrive in it. But not everything. Oh, my God. She might come out here in a minute and say, let me talk about him, y'all. Let me talk about him. She's here, so she might come out here in a minute. But stay right where you are for now. Don't come out yet. <laughs> but we got to fight about, no, 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 no. I don't want everybody to, because I know that people are going to compare themselves. And, I, and unless you tell them the full story, well, we just fought for 30 minutes, but we made up now. And so here's a good picture of the family. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you, I wish somebody will post when we're in a fight. You need to see when we in a fight, what I look like. <laughs> What's she? Glory to God, Mrs. Edwards. Glory to God. Praise God. You don't have a microphone today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Everybody just wait. Why are you looking like you're threatening me? Like you're threatening me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anyways, can I get back to my sermon? Thank you. Don't be posting it. Don't post it. Don't post it. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Um, y'all know it's 11.40? I got to go. Listen, um, I just looked at my, oh my gosh, I got to go. Okay, 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 come on, come on, come on, focus. Um, um, uh, no, 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 Friday, Friday this happened, and I, I, I need to tell you this. I got to guard my heart. I have to guard my heart. Uh, I had a single young adult deal the other day. I had a bunch of people here. One of these guys got up and said, hey, I'm a pastor, and I'm discipling four of the guys, and I want you to tell me, Pastor Conway, how do I tell them to, uh, to, to, to not struggle with pornography and stuff like that? To which I said, I, I didn't say it because I didn't want to offend the dude, but in my mind I said, why you have to use it for them? Why you don't use it for you? Don't you struggle with what, you got to, what your eyes see too? So I said, I said, bro, I, I'm glad you don't struggle with it, but I do. And my 80-year-old dad do too. So guess what I have to do? I got to put filters on my stuff so that I can't get everything. I got to make sure I don't watch everything so that I don't, my mind don't go places where it shouldn't go. Amen. I got to do that. I know, no, 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 clap, you need to pray for me. So then, so then... <laughs> So then, watch this, watch, watch, watch. So I, I continue to say, hey, bro, listen, if I walk, if I walk anywhere, anywhere, and I, see, and I see somebody on TV or I see somebody famous somewhere, and, and they got a little bit of curves, you know what I got to fight? I got to fight not going online to look them up to see those curves a little closer. <laughs> you see, you don't want the pastor to tell the truth. You just want me to lie to you, huh? You just want to pretend as if, oh, he's so untouchable. No, I ain't. That's the reality for me. So I got to make sure I can't get access to everything. Because I don't trust myself. Because I got to guard my, I got to guard what I love to watch. That's why I can't watch everything. That's why you can't watch it either. At least this service, I got some brothers agreeing with. Last service, they were like. I'm like, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all scared of your wives like that? You need to tell them. Expose it so that they know, so they can help you get freedom in it. You better guard what's there. You better guard it. Or else it will take control of your life like you've never seen before. Let's go. It's, it's 1140. Let's go. I take care of my spiritual, emotional, and relational health. You've got to stay healthy in all three areas. You've got to spend time with God. You've got to manage your moods. You've got to make sure relationally you have people in your life that are running with you. Next one. Oh. Oh, I'm running in community. I'm going to stay here a little bit too quickly. I'm running in community. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm begging you. We preach this every week in our church. You must have some people that come alongside you and support you when you're trying to make good decisions. You must have some people that know what's going on in your life so they can tell you, great job, or they can tell you, stop the nonsense. They can tell you, I'm coming over right now. I heard about this story this last weekend where um, a young lady was going through a, about a depression, and she's like, I don't like my life. I'm done. And two ladies from her life group came over. They sat by the bathroom door and said, you don't even have to open the door. We're just going to pray you out of there. And they prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And they didn't judge her, but they just loved her until she says, okay, I give up. Y'all love me too much. That's what church is supposed to be about. People who love each other so much, I'm running with you. And we're going to fight the good fight together. Where is the gentleman? When you have to do that alone, 
gosh, why would you even choose that? And then now you say, Pastor, but I got a bad life group. Good, try another one. Well, I got three bad ones. Try a fourth one. Here's why. Because the enemy wants you to say, I give up. Anything good that God has for you, the enemy wants you to give up on it before you find the benefits of it. Next one. My joy, satisfaction, and fulfillment is found only in Jesus. Not in your job. Not in what you do. It's found in Jesus. See, many people, they give up this, and all they do is switch what they're consumed about. So now they're consumed about their job. So they now love their job, love their job, love their job, and they worship their job, only to then say to God, God, I love this so much, and if God asked you to give it up, you would say, absolutely not, because your identity is found in it. You have to ask yourself all the time, can I give up this job and still be okay? Here's why you have to ask the question, because if you can't, you'll stay too long. If you can't, you'll hurt people along the process because anybody that now tries to threaten you in that job, you're going to view them as the enemy and not as a child of God. you got to be careful. That's why people stay way longer than they're supposed to because they're consumed. They're worshiping the job that they are. So you just switch from one in a maid to get consumed with your job. You're not going to find satisfaction there. It's only found in Jesus. Let's go. How many more we got? Go, 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 go. I'm abiding in the word. You know that one. Go. You, you need to rank yourself in all of these. Last one I'm going to focus on. I am walking, I'm a walking billboard of God's sup- supremacy and sufficiency. Supremacy means God, Romans 8. God, I know that you have me here. I know you don't make mistakes. And you work all things together for my good. So I know if I'm single, it's because you want me to be in this season. And I'm going to celebrate that until you change the situation. Sufficiency says, God, I know you are enough. I don't have to get anything else. You are enough by yourself. And I'm going to be a walking billboard that tells the world, I am the testimony of God's supremacy and his sufficiency. Until we have singles and young adults like that, I'm telling you, no wonder you don't look no different than the world. The same thing they struggle with, you struggle with. The same stuff you do every day, the same stuff they do, because you don't believe in the supremacy and the sufficiency of God. Next one. I live for the ultimate, not the penultimate. We talked about this. The ultimate is the marriage when you see Christ face to face. The penultimate is the marriage that you want to go pursue right now. You're not living for this one. This is a picture of the future. This is a taste of what it's going to be like when you get to heaven. You ought to live for the ultimate, not the penultimate. Last one. I have a covering that has influence over my life and is involved in my decision-making process. You know why you need that? Because whenever you find a relationship, you're going to act like a fool. Look at the person and say, whenever you find a relationship, tell them quick. (laughs) You're going to act like a fool. So you need somebody now, you need somebody now who can provide wisdom for you. Before you meet that person that then you get in the clouds. (laughs) Let's go. Come on, turn the page. You know this one already. Evaluate yourself. Master, mission, moods, and mate. You know, that's the way God, that's the order in which God wants it. You have flipped the order, and you go mate, moods, mission, and master. God says that's the correct order. Lastly, and then we're done. Lastly, um, let me give you these for your notes because you're going to be mad. Um, let's go through contentment. There, there are five of them. Here's the five. You have to understand the power of contentment. God has the power to do whatever you need. You have to understand the enemy of contentment. There are two blanks there that you have to fill out. Crushing comparison and celebrating God's blessings in others. By the way. The reason why God hasn't given you all some of y'all what you have been asking for is because you can't celebrate it when he gives it to somebody else. So because you still, because you get another invitation to go to this wedding and you mad you ain't married yet, you can't celebrate. You ought to send them flowers. You ought to send them a personal note saying how glad you are for them and that you're going to pray for them for the next 60 days that the wedding is the best thing that ever happened to them. Because you cannot do that. Maybe that's the reason why God hasn't blessed you with what you want. Next one. Uh, you got to learn to be content with little or with much. Next one. you got to choose carefully what you pursue. Too many of us pursue our jobs. Choose carefully what you pursue. Next one. Rely on Christ's strength. He says the secret to contentment is depending on him. Two things you have to do, crush comparison. What does that mean? That means sometimes you need to get off of Facebook. You need to get off of Instagram. You need to get off of all your social media because you're, you're feeding comparison if you don't crush it. Number two, you have to celebrate the gratitude. Celebrate what God's done in you. What he has for you. And not just what you want. You know these stages I taught you last year. Go get the tape if you don't need it. If you don't have it, there are five of them. Fighting, that's when you're fighting God for what you want. These are stages of waiting. 
You need to ask where you at. Then you start hurting. Okay, I know that I shouldn't be doing it, but that's really where I'm at. Then you start knowing and you start depending on God a little bit, but not fully. Then he slowly changes your heart and then you trust him. Here's what trusting means. God, whether you give me or not, I'm still satisfied. Whether you give me what I want or not, I'm still content right now. This is where God's trying to take you. You can fight him as long as you want. He has time enough to wait you out, but he wants you here. Let me close with this illustration and then I'm done. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, you can get somebody to fill you up all you want. Some of you try to get your job to fill you up. If that's what you do, listen, it won't last. Some of you try to find a mate to fill you up and you believe you find the right mate. First month. Second month. First year. First kid. But it's coming. They can't satisfy you either. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not until you go to God and you say, God, I need to spend some more time with you. I need you to be my best friend, God. I need you to help me get there, God. I need you. I need you. I need you. I'm going to do everything I can, God, to spend time with you, to focus on you, to develop a relationship with you. It's not until you're there. And when the world takes you out, you know where, God, I, I, I got to come back, God. I need you, God. And you go right back and say, God, I need you again. I need you, Lord. It's not until you're there that you realize how much you really, 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 really need God. It's not down till there. Now, the beautiful thing that makes God different than everybody else is this. When you trust God, when you allow him to fill you and nobody else, then he'll take you places further and higher than you've ever been before. If you just learn how to trust your God. And allow him to fill you and satisfy you and give you joy. Father, will you help this body of believers understand the significance of loving your life through us. God, these are not tips that you can do if you just try harder. This is a surrendering that we have to do knowing that it is not possible apart from Christ. The text says, God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I pray for every young adult, I pray for every single person that they will rely on you, get filled with you so that you'll take them places they never dreamt before. I pray for all married couples today that if they're not finding their satisfaction in you and we're looking for it, for it from a mate, I pray that you'll help them too to realize the futility in that. Transform us from the inside out, we pray. In the matchless name of Jesus. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. I don't want you to move just yet. If you want somebody to pray for you, when everybody else is going out, then I want you to come up and we'll consider that honor. We'll pray, stay here and pray for you as long as we need to. Two things. You're going to get let go in sections. Men will see you on Wednesday. Young adults and singles will see you on Friday. And if you want to register for the conference, you can do that. I want you to look at the screens. And when you look there, they'll tell you which section goes. And if your section's not illuminated, then talk to the people around you and get to know them. God placed them there sovereignly for a reason. Encourage their spirits. Thanks for being here. God bless. We'll see you.